Robert, let's start today with the new data out on prices. Are consumers paying more or less for the products they need? Well, Susan, that, the, the answer to that is yes. Uh, some products are coming down in price and some products are, are going up. And we're seeing this tremendous churn now with almost all economic data, but certainly that is spotlit by uh, the price data, both the consumer price index and the producer price index for May. And, and we also see that in the labor data, but uh, in, in May, we saw energy prices coming back up on the producer side, but other prices going down. And so I've been characterizing this as a tremendous churn. And, and I think it's gonna take a while, especially with the price and the labor data, uh, for things to settle out and for us to find out where we really are in this economy where everything has sort of been turned upside down by COVID-19 and we're really just starting to come out of it. Things are starting to normalize. But as you know, the data stream lags a week, a month, a quarter. And so we're not really ever getting a real picture of where we are today. And the data we're seeing today just represents this huge churn in the economy from May into June. We had a strong jobs report last week, but still a lot of people remain unemployed and the claims still keep coming in. Yes, now the claims data are coming down, but they're still very elevated. We have 1.5 million people on uh, initial claims. That's well down from the over 6 million peak, and, and, but, it, uh, but that is just a huge number in and of itself. Now, I've seen it reported where people are still accumulating the, the last eight or nine weeks and coming up with 40 million people unemployed. That is not accurate. I've seen that reported in, in a number of, of of well-known financial publications, many of those people have now gone back to work. So that cumulative number over the last eight or nine weeks of 40 million is informative, but it doesn't really tell a complete story of the labor market because we know people are coming back to work in June and more will come back in July. Robert, at the last Fed meeting, they decided to leave rates unchanged. What are the highlights from that meeting? Yes, that was no surprise at all, Susan. We are widely expected the Fed would stand pat and take an attitude of watchful waiting. Uh, because of all this churn, all the stuff that the Fed has rolled out in terms of new programs, they're gonna take a pause here and they're gonna see what works and what doesn't work and what they need to do in the future. Now, uh, one thing that we did see was a new dot plot and we also got new economic projections. And both of those things are consistent with the Fed funds rate staying near zero through the end of 2022. Almost all members of the Federal Open Market Committee will want right now want to keep that funds rate near zero uh, through the end of 2022. The other important thing that came out of the Fed meeting was uh, Chair Jay Powell discussing what the Fed may be doing in the future, two things they're gonna start thinking about forward guidance, the language that they use to tell us where they're going in the future, how they're gonna get there. So I expect to see some tweaks for that coming up. And the other thing that Jay Powell discussed was the idea of using uh, asset purchases, quantitative easing, the, the bond purchases that the Fed has been engaged in uh, recently to have a specific desired effect on the yield curve. We call that yield curve control. So that's sort of targeted quantitative easing. We're not used to that in this country. Japan's been doing it for a while. And I, expect the, I do expect the Fed to move in that direction. So perhaps we get some more information uh, about that at the next Fed meeting, which will be at the end of July. 